Welcome to Learn to our YouTube videos. This video is going to demonstrate how to set up a virtual machine and recover it, recover a physical backup to a virtual machine on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 or CentOS 7. First thing we want to do is uh, open up your virtual software, and I'm, in this case we're using VMware, and we're going to set up a new virtual machine. And the guest operating system you want it to be Linux. And it gives you a list here. Uh, we're using Enterprise 7, so there is no Enterprise 7 listed here. So you can safely go down to just other Linux 64-bit because it's not a 2.6 kernel either. It's, it's a 3.x kernel. So we're going to just do other Linux 64-bit. And the virtual name, we'll just call it CentOS 7.x. Use a bridge networking. And the size of the drive, uh, we're going to make this system, we'll go ahead and make it 180, 180 gigabytes. You can do whatever size you'd like. And then once it's done, we're going to quickly uh, edit this virtual machine. And we're going to change the memory, the RAM. I'm going to bump this up. And then the CD-ROM, you can use a CD. Uh, in this case, we've used a, we created an ISO image. So I'm going to grab the ISO. And we're ready to go. So what we'll do here is now we'll hit play, start the virtual machine. We're going to boot in the airbag. We're going to press enter. Now the new airbag 4.4 is pretty cool. When you boot up off of it, if it detects any missing drivers to talk to the hardware, it'll load it for you automatically now. You won't even have to worry about inserting them yourself. And when you're going to a virtual environment from physical, you always just want to do the test option because that will ensure that the drivers get loaded for the hard drive. In this case, you can see, here we go, it loaded the drivers and we're ready to rock. And we want to do it'll. We can do a test backup. You don't have to. One, if it lists the files available, we're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and quit out of this. And since this is physical to virtual on Enterprise 7 using Lone Tar version 4.4, and we're on LVM, we currently have to do a guided step by step since we're doing LVM. So we'll do number two. And here it's just telling you the base of operations that's going to happen. And we'll format the drive. Select the drive you want, SDA. And here is the most technical part of the whole step. Everything else is relatively easy, but here's the hard part. Because we hit P to print, and there's nothing there. Uh, under where device boot device boot here, start, and blocks, there's nothing. If we And if we go here and we hit control alt F3, which is our original configuration, you can see underneath the start and the block. So we can use this as a reference to when we make our new F disk table. And notice the size here. We got a 160 gig hard drive, but the new drive says 193. So we're going to want to adjust the sizes as well. We don't ever want to modify the boot partition. You don't necessarily need to do that. It's just irrelevant. The size won't matter, but everything else you want to adjust. So we're going to go ahead now. We know our numbers here. And 
You can always hit M for help to so give you a list of what to do. But to add a new partition, we're going to hit N for add. And you want P for primary, number one. The default always starts off at 2048. You can press enter for the default. And then to find the N, we want to go back over here, 102.6047. 102.6047. That's the end block, and we'll hit now P to print, and we can see it there. But notice, again, we're missing one thing. The, we're missing this little star under the boot part. We got to, we want to get everything accurate. This has to match for it to successfully clone to a virtual environment. And so to do that, we'll hit A, and P to print, and now that boot partition has a star under the boot section. And we got to add one more partition here. N for new, P for primary, number two, start, and just take the default. If you want it to be the full size of the drive, you just take the defaults. Press enter. Now we hit P to print. And we're not done yet because if you look at Alt F3, the, the original figure, configuration, it's a Linux LVM right here. ID 8E Linux LVM. So we have to change the ID from 83 to 8E. So we go back here to the Alt F1 will take you back to the main screen. So to do that you do you can hit M to find out but I, T is to change the system partition system ID. So we'll do T and we want to change partition number two and you can do a list of them but an LVM is 8E. Now we hit P to print and it looks good. Looks exactly like the original, except obviously the size is a little bit bigger. So to write and save, we're going to hit W. And it's going to make the physical and volume groups for DevSDA2. Now here it's saying, we do the root file system first. It's asking for the size. How big do you want your root file system? It says 179 gig available. Do not use 179 gig, the whole thing, because it's that's for all your file systems. So if you do it all for root, then your swap, your home, if you have a second home direct uh, home partition, they they won't have any room to be used up. So you want to keep that in mind when you're going through this list. So I'm going to make my root partition 100 gig. Now the swap, we want to make, uh, you don't want to make it too large. Uh, some people like large swap, but I mean, no more than four gig. I don't see it needing need to be more than four, but you can make it as large as you want. But I mean, four gig is, not, is more than enough. And do not exceed 75 gig. Now in this case, I only have one home directory. I don't have any other file systems after the home directory. So I can basically use, utilize the rest of the 75 gig for my home. But if you have another one after home, like a U or a U2, just keep that in mind when you're creating the space to save it so you have enough space for one of them, because a file system can equal zero gigabytes. All right, now we're gonna format all the partitions. It's crazy how fast it formats root 100 gig in like seconds. Now we're going to restore all the data. Hit A to restore all. It's going to mount all the file systems and it's going to tell you the command being run. And now we just type in the file that you want to restore from. After the restore, it'll do the grub configuration. It'll install grub. 
verify Grub, and then restore the SC Linux contents if SC Linux is enabled. Now the last thing we need to do, since this is a physical to virtual recovery, we have to run make init rd. And to do that, we go into the shell prompt. Before we reboot the machine, we'll go to the shell prompt, type the word mount, make sure, okay, our file systems aren't mounted. And to know what file systems to mount, we're going to go into the user airbag directory, cd slash user slash air dash bag slash config. Okay, and there's two files. Both files we want to cat. Cat LVM underscore mount. Okay, there's our logical volumes, dev, the CentOS root and CentOS home, and then cat MNT table. And that's our boot file system, which is a partition. So the first thing we need to do is mount the dev root. <coughs> so we're going to mount slash dev slash mapper slash cent. Slash root space slash MNT. Always mount it to slash MNT first because slash is the RAM, so MNT will be root file system. Okay, then we're going to do the boot file system MNT slash boot and then mount the last file system slash home. do mount make sure they're mounted everything looks good so now we'll do a change root to MNT so we'll make MNT slash ch root space slash MNT now if we do a mount you won't see anything because we haven't run mount sysfs yet so we don't need to worry about that but we want to see where we're at we're in slash now let's go to the slash boot cd to slash boot and this is all you have to run mk init rd space minus v space minus f as in frank space init ram fs dash and then dollar sign parentheses u name space minus r close parentheses dot img space dollar sign parentheses u name space minus r close parentheses. And what you name minus R is it, it basically is the kernel release that the operating system is using. So you know, you don't have to type in the long number. You can just use that variable and it'll set it. So now we'll press enter. And some stuff might, you might see these things like turning off host only mode, sys not mounted. That's okay. Uh, nothing. If it errors out, it'll say error incomplete. But if you get back to an airbag shell prompt, then it completed successfully. Okay, once you get back to the airbag prompt, the image is done and your system is ready to reboot. All you got to do is type exit from the shell prompt, type exit again, and hit E to exit. Shut down and then hit control delete to reboot. And now it's going to boot into the CentOS. Now with SC Linux, it'll go through the boot procedure and then it's going to reboot automatically again. That's because it's got to relabel all the content for the security to take effect. And if you want to see what's going on, you can hit the right arrow on this screen and it's going to tell you everything it's doing. You can see exactly what the operating system is doing during boot up. You can see that the uh, warning SE Linux targeted policy relabeling is required. It's relabeling. And this relabeling time could take a little bit depending on your system and how fast it is. But it will let you know when it's done. At the bottom left there, it's telling you a percentage. And when that's done, it'll reboot and then you're up and running on a virtual machine. Okay, and it's rebooted now, and now it should load into CentOS.
Now you can test logging in. And you are up and running on a virtual environment.